Hello everyone. My name is Miki Sugimura and today I'd like to talk about the maybe inclusion and inclusive education. I think most of you have already known about the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, and these goals include 17 goals and 169 targets. Relating to the education matters, the goal four focusing on the education importance. Before starting the SDGs, SDGs, uh, we are already shared the wonderful international target called uh, Education for All, which was launched in 1990, and also the Millennium Development Goals. The differences between the SDGs and those goals are two points. First one is the SDGs more focusing on the not only developing countries, but developed countries. And another point is focusing on the individual matters, which is closely related to human security issues. How we can guarantee that each individual person the safety and the peaceful and stable life. And this topic is very, very closely related to my, today's my topic. Can you guess what is the common mission of the SDGs 169 target? Can you guess it is? It's that no one left behind. This is a very, very important, but very complicated concept. And today's my topic is inclusion, is closely related this one. The so education have attached importance of giving the same opportunity to everyone to aim the same goal, which is equality and Many schools in many countries' education system focus on it. But do you think it is enough for each individual, each individual person to realize their dream? No, because each person have a different situation, cultural background, and diversity. So in that mean, nowadays, we have a discussion of the equity, which is considering the each individual's context or the cultural differences or diversity. How can make uh, harmonize this uh, equality and equity in education? Today, I ask you to think about how you can put the real, the classrooms practices is shaded in this uh, XY plate. First of all, I'd like to introduce one of the case study of the Japanese public school. Can you see this picture? Only two teachers are teaching the four students. Comparing with a normal school classroom, it's very small size because this is a Japanese language education class for the foreign students. Of course, foreign students are always normally included in the regular class, but sometimes they are visiting these classes to be supported by the special teachers to improve their the Japanese languages. This is a, one of the style of the equity because the Foreign students are already given a chance to join the regular classes, the equality, equality, but the equity should be very important. Another case study is from Nepal. I'm a comparative educationist, so I quite often visit many countries and many countries' schools. When I visited the one of the public school in Kathmandu, of the capital city of Nepal, I was very, very surprised because on the left top, the picture shows you the one teacher is teaching something to one male student. He is a vision impaired student. Cannot see anything, but he is learning together with a regular student. But sometimes, of course, he has some problem. Then he can visit the resource class where the special teachers can kindly translate these, the regular materials from to the Braille system and uh, those students can learn the Braille system and uh, catch up with the content of the regular class student learning. More importantly, this Nepal class is very, very unique because the teachers who have a uh, vision impaired are teaching the impaired student. Can you imagine what the situation it is? It's a real the inclusion because even teachers can be included as a kind of the teaching social activity. 
it's quite interesting. And uh, in the Nepal is a still developing countries, but they can teach us a lot of things. One more story from Nepal. I would like to introduce one girl's student. When I met her, she was at the age of 19 and she was a very serious ill. So since the birth, she couldn't stand up, she couldn't work. So in that mean, she was always studying at home, not in a school. In that mean, she was not the included in the regular school. But when I asked her in English, because I couldn't speak Nepali, she kindly replied to me. My question is, are you enjoying studying? Do you like study? And she finally said to me with a beautiful smile, yes, I like study very much. And today I'm very happy because now you came from Japan and I had been studying English for last 19, not 19 years, but about 10 years or 11 years. And finally, so that's why I could speak to you in English. This is a real meaning of my learning. When I heard of this kind of word, I'm very, very impressed. She's not included in the equality, but the equity might be guaranteed her the learning with the special teachers. When we look back those three case studies, can you imagine which case is applied to the, which the rectangle? The, this is the uh, right side is uh, more in equality and uh, top side is uh, equity. But maybe first and second cases from Japan and Nepal might be put on the right side because they are also are equipped with educational opportunity equally, but at the same time, they have a chance to visit the Japanese language class or the resource classes to catch up with a kind of the very special uh, reasons. This is totally different from the exclusion. But on the other hand, when we took a look back to that lady uh, who are sitting at home, studying at home, we might uh, call uh, this is an invisible but inclusion. She is not included at school, but even if she is out of school, she is still connected with society and communities. And when I visited her, she finally could speak to me. It's a kind of the inclusion. This situation is very, very different from the invisible exclusion. When we look back some the case study of the Japanese classroom, of course, now in Japan, all the students have a right to learn and they are, of course, given to the equal education opportunity, but some people, some students are suffered from bullying or prejudice or something. It's kind of the outside from the company and it's a kind of the invisible exclusion. So that is the side. One more thing I want to talk to you, the education also take an important role. How we can encourage the people to include it in the society. Because even the, some learners learn at school, if they can, cannot to catch up with the maybe social life, it's very difficult. In that mean, one of the bakery cafe when I visited in Nepal again, taught me a very interesting because at that bakery cafes, all the staff uh, use the sign languages because they are the speech and hearing impaired persons. And even the customer must cooperate, try to speak, not speak, try to gesture with ordering with some sign languages. So I tried to do that. When I ate the very delicious pizza at the restaurant, one staff tried to communicate me like this. Is someone who can understand the sign languages? <laughs> like this. I'm ashamed at the time I didn't know that meaning and I misunderstood. Oh, my chin was stained with a pizza sauce here. <laughs> so I take up my tissue paper from my pocket and I swipe my chin. <laughs> and the staff was very laughing at me. Oh, no, 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 no. My staff wanted to say thank you very much. 
It was very moving and I was very, very appreciate his kind consideration because that uh, the staff, uh, he already understand my situation. This very old Japanese lady <laughs> couldn't understand the Nepali, couldn't understand the sign languages, but he tried to speak to me with a Japanese style sound language. Usually the Nepali people, when they want to say thank you very much in Danibat in Nepali, like this, but the different the sign languages. So they try to understand the cultural differences. This is another very good example of how we can exclude our the, some diversity. Of course, we need to think about the differences between quality and equity. And some of you have already known these pictures. This is a very famous one. And uh, of course, when we encourage the people's the well-being and good learning, we must put some more boxes for the marginalized or minority peoples. But today, I introduced three case studies. And now this picture shows us the same baseball team. But uh, in that mean, it doesn't not necessary uh, which we can save the same purpose. Because some people want to say the another scene, or some people want to say the another playing game. So in that mean, we need to think about no one left behind, which has already strongly suggested in the SDGs goals. It doesn't mean not aim to the same goal, we try to consider the each learners the different perspective, different background, and we try to encourage their learning more for cherishing the human dignity and the cultural differences. It's very complicated, but finally, we must always believe our dream is coming true for realizing our as a good the future through the education. This picture was drawn by one of the foreign students who are studying in the Japanese public school. And uh, maybe this picture symbolizes how the diversity is cherished in that, such a multicultural school. You can see the nakayoku and ganbatte kudasai. These two messages strongly encourage us how we can encourage our individual person's learning, not only at school, but even in the society, and not only in the developing countries, but also developing countries. The education have a lot of function and a lot of possibility for our the dreams come true. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.